It was a scary week last week on campus, and we have all the highlights. And there's a new coach on campus. We'll introduce you to him. Welcome to NSU News. I'm Tori Thompson. And I'm Olivia Martzell. Thanks for joining us. Your news starts now. Leading off our news today, NSU dedicated a new building on campus recently. Here's a look at who is inside the building. September 4th marks a day in history for Northwestern. Governor Bobby Jinder attended the ribbon cutting ceremony to highlight the opener of Casper Hall. The second phase of the project renovated East Casper Hall, which was originally constructed in 1939 for use as a dormitory. The renovated building now houses the administrative offices. Before this project was completed, many of these services were in separate buildings at different ends of campus. As a result of this project, a number of these offices that serve students have been consolidated into one easily accessible building, connecting students with the resources they need and maximizing the university's ability to help its students succeed. Casper Hall was originally built in 1939. It served as a men's dorm from 1939 until it closed in 2003. Caspery Hall was reconstructed because it had severely dilapidated and just really needed to be updated. And, um, it, it was a mess, so it, it really needed to be reconstructed. It is now reopened to students and it houses the President Office, Provost and Vice President Offices for Academic Student Affairs, Dean of College of the Arts, Letters, Graduate Studies and Research, Office of Equal Employment Opportunity, planning and assignment and the internal auditor. Well, I mean, it's been great. We, uh, I mean, it's a brand new building. We have, everything's working. We love it when the air works. And um, it's definitely more convenient getting around campus and um, all of our services are now in the same location. So it's been good. The administration welcomes all students, faculty, and staff to take a look at the remodeled Casper Hall. For NSU News, I'm Jatrenson Gilliard. As the semester nears its last few academic weeks, students in the Creative and Performing Arts Department are preparing for their last few major productions. The Northwestern State University Department of Theater and Dance has been hard at work these past few weeks preparing for their upcoming show, Once on this Island. The show will be held November 13th through the 17th in the A.A. Fredericks Auditorium. Most people may think that putting on a production is a leisurely process with all of the singing, dancing and smiling faces, but students regularly spend many hours a day with few days off, rehearsing for productions throughout the semester. Students in the theater department provide not only the acting talent for the great shows they put on, but also do much of the behind the scenes work such as sound, lighting and choreographing all of the dances. Through their hard work and dedication to their art, the theater department is one of the best programs in the state. I spoke with musical theater major David Brumfield, who was able to give me his take on what the show is about. So Once on this Island is uh, told by a group of storytellers. Basically, it's, it's uh, a group of, of people who tell a story to a young girl of Timun. And uh, they include uh, the gods, which they have Asaka, the god of the earth, and Erzuli, the god of love, and Agwe, the god of water, and Papage, the demon of death. And so um, basically, it's, it's this giant folk tale kind of based around the Little Mermaid of sorts of this tale of a young woman, Timun, who travels from her land to another part of her, her island, somewhere where she's not supposed to be, and she's looking for the love of her, of her life. For more information or to purchase tickets, call the NSU Theater Department at 357-4483. With NSU News, I'm Daniel Thiels reporting. NSU's Department of Criminal Justice, History, and Social Sciences will host a screening of a 75-minute documentary film titled Louisiana During World War II. The screening will be at 5 p.m. Thursday, November 14th, right here in the Aura G. Williams Television Studio in Kaiser Hall. Dr. Jerry Sanson of LSU Alexandria, author of Louisiana During World War II, Politics and Society, 1939-1945, 
wrote the screenplay for the film and Dr. William P. Robinson, professor of history and head of the Department of History and Political Science at Southeastern Louisiana University, directed and narrated the film. The movie will be made available to history teachers all over the state in 2014 who will be able to download it free of charge. For more information on the screening, contact Dr. William Housel, coordinator of NSU's Department of Criminal Justice, History, and Social Sciences. The event is free and open to the public. Violinist Lynn He will perform at Northwestern State University tomorrow night, November 8th at 7.30 p.m. in McGill Recital Hall. He's an associate professor of violin at LSU and has performed concerts at many universities across the country. He's recently, he performed solo recitals and gave master classes at Arizona State University, Florida State University, Tulane University, and the University of North Texas. Admission to the concert is free and the public is invited to attend. All right, Jessica, can you give us a little update on the weather this weekend? Uh, this weekend, hopefully, it'll be getting a little bit warmer. I'll have more for that on that for you next. It could have been half a century ago. Or maybe it was just last spring. It doesn't matter how long ago you graduated, because here, you're still family. No matter where your education has taken you, or how much you think things have changed, Northwestern is still home. Wouldn't you like to receive an Ivy League education at a fraction of the cost? The Louisiana Scholars College is here to give you just that in a close-knit learning environment. Established in 1987 as the state's designated honors college, the Louisiana Scholars College continues to offer a unique, comprehensive, and interdisciplinary curriculum that helps hundreds of students excel beyond the rest in the professional world. The Scholars College seeks highly motivated students who are willing to experience new ideas in pursuit of their education. Expand your mind without expanding your wallet. Ever wanted to travel abroad and climb the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France? Boat on the waterways of Venice, Italy. Visit the famous castles of Bavaria, Germany, or relax on the sandy beaches of Sydney, Australia, while earning class credit at the same time? These locations and opportunities are offered to you as an NSU student, regardless of your major. For more information, contact the Family and Consumer Sciences Department, and you can be on your way. After a year at one college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. That's when I heard about Northwestern State University's nursing program. I enrolled, learned from the best, and graduated with a four-year nursing degree. Now I'm helping save lives in a hospital surgical intensive care unit. I'm Kaylee Craven, a proud and successful graduate of Northwestern State University, and you can be too. Northwestern State University, students today, leaders tomorrow. Hi, I'm Jessica Dodd with your NSU Weather. Let's take a look at our Demon Doppler radar. As you can see, the, you may have noticed we're having a lot of wind not, right now. You've already been aware of that. Uh, current conditions, we have a high of 62. Humidity is at 41%. Dew point is at 38 degrees. And the winds are coming north at 9 miles an hour. On our national satellite, as you can see, New England is getting a whole bunch of storms. We're kind of, we've already dealt with our storms for now so we're not hit feeling it quite as bad as uh, New England or as the uh, Washington area Texas is getting a little bit of storms. Our national temperatures as you can see pretty much the hottest we're having right now is uh, Seattle at 60 or sorry it's uh, Los Angeles at 78 degrees. Uh, Dallas, Texas, 63 degrees, Brownsville, 69, a little bit closer to 70, New Orleans, we got 63 degrees, and I think Minneapolis is as cool as it gets at 36 degrees right now. 
on our regional satellite, as I said, you can kind of see some of Texas's storms might be moving up to get us later, so you should be on the watch. Just we uh, we got past our storm that we had earlier, but it, we might be getting another one. Our regional conditions: San Angelo in Texas, 59 degrees; Corpus Christi, 68 degrees; Dallas looks like they're getting some clouds, but still at 63 degrees; Shreveport. Uh, a little bit more sun, so some clouds at 62 degrees, and New Orleans, 63 degrees, partly sunny. And our Louisiana temperatures, we've got Shreveport, 62 degrees. Lake Charles is as hot as it seems to be at 66 degrees. Natchitoches, here in Natchitoches, we got 63 degrees. Alexandria, 62. Monroe, 61. Baton Rouge, 64 degrees. And New Orleans has 63 degrees. And tonight we're going to have a low of 42 degrees and then tomorrow a high of 67. Our five day forecast Friday we're going to have sun with a high of 67 and a low of 38. Saturday we're going to start be warming up with a partly cloudy and a high of 70 and low of 43. Sunday we're going to have sun with a high of 74 and a low of 47. Monday more sun with a high of 74 and a low of 48 and Tuesday it's going to be partly cloudy with a high of 75 and a low of 50. I'm Jessica Dodd and this is your NSU weather. You and her and all the other cousins would be having tea parties in her playhouse out back. Hi, I rehearsed trying to convey the right emotion so please don't cause a commotion and mess me up. Thanks. I spend countless hours moving with Grace, so please be careful with flashing cameras. They can be distracting. Grace, my steps retreat, poor wandering one. I spend countless hours trying to perfect my pitch. So please silence your cell phones. I want to be heard. Please adhere to the rules so we can put on our best performance for you. When I was a little girl, my father taught me about business. He had me pick out a company and follow it in the stock market. While a student at Northwestern State University, my interest in business led to a degree in business administration, and that degree is paying off, as I now own my own company. I'm Sherry Talley, a proud and successful graduate of Northwestern State University. You can be too. Northwestern State University, students today, leaders tomorrow. Northwestern State University of Louisiana encourages education, research, and action focused on the environment, energy conservation, and sustainability. Also, as part of this initiative, NSU promotes a healthy student body campus and community. NSU is proud to support thinking and acting in an environmentally responsible way. The night was full of musical treats for Northwestern students as the Natchitoches Northwestern Symphony Orchestra presented a Halloween concert. Michael Johnson has the story. Thrills of melody spooked the night when the Northwestern Symphony Orchestra performed their Halloween concert in Miguel Recital Hall last Thursday in front of a packed house. Douglas Bockenhuis was lead conductor who dressed as Beethoven. Mario Torres and Lincoln Hall as assistant conductors, along with vocal faculty Denissa Hester, Michael Rorex, and Terry Sanders as featured soloists. The orchestra performed pieces like Symphony No. 5 by Beethoven, Night on the Ball Mountain by Mazorski, along with many more frightening compositions. The performances brought sensation to the audience as the orchestra received a standing ovation all night long. I've had uh, a lot of audience and a very good crowd before, but uh, tonight was uh, actually a lot more of what I expected and 
I think they had a good time and the concert went really nice and, and thanks to all the the kids in the orchestra and all the students and all the the professors that helped to put all of this together as well. I'm Michael Johnson and this has been NSU News. Monsters and ghosts weren't the only thing out last week. There were a few frightening things over in the student union. Emily Self has the story. The Student Activities Board took Halloween week to the next level with their haunted house on Caspery Hill. Bottles and bottles of faux blood covered the student actors and their props. Chilling screams and hair-raising strobe lights added the spooky atmosphere that students flocked to. The line started on the student union catwalk and went down the stairs and continued to the sidewalk. The scares featured included bloody bodies, a haunted hospital, dangerous and properly restrained prisoners, a demonic funeral home, and of course, zombies. To our facilities, I ask that you do not run, do not talk to my friends, do not touch them, and I will let you know what we're doing. Just follow me, and I don't like this. Mm -hmm. We're heading into the hospital right now. It is on my left. that you still do not run, exit through the door on the side, and enjoy the rest of your time. This has been Emily Self with NSU News. Kyla, give us a quick update on what's going on with NSU Sports. Well, on this Saturday, the Demons will play the Lamar Cardinals at Turpin Stadium at 3 o'clock p.m. But we'll have that and more when we return with your Demon Sports Blitz. Looking for a way to stay healthy and get into shape? Then come and join NSU's Wellness Recreation and Activity Center. The rack contains two large gyms for basketball, volleyball, and badminton, racquetball courts, free weight room, strength and cardio rooms, group exercise room, and an indoor track. The Rack has a fully staffed service center and will serve all of your health needs. Come and start your lifestyle change today at the NSU Rack. With a full-time job, Donna Johnson could only dream of getting her master's degree. No way did she have time to go back to college. Or so she thought. Donna enrolled in ENSU, Northwestern State University's online program. ENSU let Donna go to class at home. Now thanks to ENSU, Donna has her master's. Learn how to get your degree by logging on to nsula.edu. Northwestern State University, students today, leaders tomorrow.
Welcome back, Demon fans. I'm Kyla Whiney, and this is your Demon Sports Blitz. Last Saturday, the number 15 team in the country came into Turpin Stadium looking for a big win on ESPN3. And a big win did happen, but it wasn't for the UCA Bears. NSU beat the Bears 31-28. The Bears outgained the Demons on the stats, but where it counted, they fell short. With the win, the Demons snap a three-game skid, improving to 4-5 to overall and 1-3 to in conference. Junior quarterback Zach Atkins threw three touchdown passes on the night as the Demons totaled 333 yards of offense on the night. The Demons now turn their attention to the Lamar Cardinals this Saturday. And so they've got a solid team playing very well, you know, lost by two points to UCA, um, you know, won a, won a game this past weekend, beat Nichols, um, you know, been in a lot of close, I had Louisiana Tech, actually had a lead on Louisiana Tech for a long period of time. So you see them making the progress, and I think you look at, uh, you know, us and them, we, we kind of parallel one another. We've played a lot of close games, played a lot of halves, you know, and had some things happen along the way in the other half of the game that the ball hadn't quite bounced, you know, the way of uh, in, in our favors. So it's going to be another typical Saturday. you got to get ready to go, and another, that'll be another good Southland Conference game. Kickoff Saturday is at 3 p.m. and the game will be on the Southland TV network. So come out with signs and banners and fill up the stands and just maybe your banner will get on TV. The volleyball team is coming off a Texas swing in conference play as they were at conference newcomers Abilene Christian and Incarnate Word last week. The Demons are currently winners of nine of their last ten winning both of last week's games. They're taking on another conference newcomer, UNO, down in New Orleans today. They will travel up to Hammond from New Orleans to take on the Southeastern this Saturday at 2 p.m. and then be back at home next Tuesday to take on UCA at 7 p.m. in Prather Coliseum. Basketball season starts tomorrow night for both the men's and women's teams at NSU. But are the Demons and Lady Demons ready to play? I would hope so. We've had two scrimmages, which we didn't perform extremely well, but I mean, the opportunity to go against somebody in front of fans and friends makes a huge difference, and they're tired of playing one another, and we're tired of them playing one another, but we really have a long way still to go. Well, I think we're definitely ready to play somebody else. You know, you get to that point where um, you're just tired of beating up on each other in practice, and it's almost like, you know, two a days in fall camp and football. You're just ready to see somebody else. And uh, we've had two close scrimmages, and I think we've gotten a lot out of both of those. Um, hopefully gotten a little of the jitters and nerves out for those um, eight new players. And, and you almost have to say ten because you throw Meredith and Trudy in that group um, that didn't play last year. So. Um, we've got a, got a lot of new faces. Uh, I like to joke and say everybody's going to need to keep their roster in hand for uh, you know, those first few home games. So hopefully they'll be able to figure out who, who is who on the court and um, our players will be able to help them understand who they are as we go along. The Lady Demons take the court at 5.30 p.m. against Southern Arkansas, with the Demons hitting the court at 7.30 p.m. to take on Letourneau. Both games will be in Prather Coliseum. An all-time reunion of NSU track and field competitors, coaches, and staff is set for this Saturday with the centerpiece event being Lunch with Leon, honoring recently retired coach Leon Johnson. The luncheon will be held in Prather Coliseum with the program focused on Johnson, who ended a remarkable 31-year tenure as head track and field coach. A minimum donation of $20 per person will cover expenses for lunch plus get you a football game ticket and a parking pass. The money will support the establishment of the Leon Johnson Endowed Track and Field Scholarship. For more information, contact the athletic department or nsudemons.com. With the retirement of Coach Johnson, NSU had to find a new coach and they didn't have to look for. Sydney Riley introduces us to the new coach. After decades of service from Coach Leon Johnson, Northwestern State has a new head track and field coach, Coach Mike Heimerman. Pretty good. Uh, you know, it's something that when you're at your alma mater, it's kind of like a, a dream that I get to realize now. You know, it's kind of a, a dream come true. Uh, so it, it feels really good because, you know, when you're at your alma mater, you always want to do a little bit extra or go that little extra distance or that, uh, you know, extra mile. So it's kind of neat. And uh, now we just get to run with it and go for it. 
Bahamaman gets into his new duties as head coach with years of experience under Coach Johnson, which is helpful for his start. Yeah, I've learned a lot uh, with Coach Johnson. You know, he's been coaching for almost 50 years. I think in high school and college, he's got 49 years of service in the state of Louisiana, which is unbelievable. Uh, the man has forgotten more about track and field than I'll ever know. So, uh, you know, some of the things he's taught me is that you can never replace hard work. Uh, hard work and effort is what's going to help you win and be successful. So that's one of the biggest things. And uh, just, uh, you know, what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. So if you put in a dollar's day worth of work, that's all you're going to get out of it. The upcoming season right around the corner, it also proves to be very promising for both the men and women who are excited to have Coach Hyman as their new coach. Well, he's always been my coach, but as far as him being over everyone, I feel like it's a great accomplishment for him. I'm proud of him. Um, I feel excited. I'm very excited about the upcoming season. And as for myself, this is my last year, so I'm expecting to go above and beyond all my own expectations. And as far as the team, we should be pretty good this year. Um, they're working hard for now, so we'll see where that gets us. Well, being that Coach Mike has been my coach since I've been here, I think it's a pretty good move for the team. And um, with him being a head coach, I think he'll lead us in the right direction. Well, as far as the team, I think we'll do well, but as far as the field events, I think we'll dominate in the field events this year, both indoor and outdoor. Um, as far as myself, I'm expecting myself to beat my old personal records from last year and to do very well in the shot put. For more information, log on to the Northwestern State Athletic website for the 2013-2014 track schedule. This has been Sydney Riley, NSU TV. And for all your Demon Sports coverage, make sure you go to NSUDemons.com to get game recaps, schedules, and more from our Sports Information Department. And that will do it for your Demon Sports Blitz. I'm Kyla Whiney. All right, Jessica, we have a lot of games this weekend. What is the weather going to be like? Well, on Saturday, it's going to be still going to be a little chilly. They might want to keep their jackets. Uh, beyond that, it's going to keep warming up, so keep a jacket handy, but you might not necessarily need it. Thanks. And Kyla, besides ba uh, football, what's going on with our basketball team? Well, on Friday, we have a doubleheader game. The women's will play at 5.30 p.m. and the demons will play at 7.30 p.m. And that'll do it for this edition of NSU News. I'm Tori Thompson. And I'm Olivia Martzell. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.